This video is on the symptoms of trauma, symptoms for individual trauma and collective trauma. And it's part two in a series. So if you haven't watched part one where we defined what trauma is, go ahead and do that first and then pick up here. I'm Amy Rose and I have a holistic counseling and consulting practice in Florida and I help people heal from trauma. And you know, trauma is not just the painful experience that you have in life. It's how that experience lands inside of you and what resources are available to you, either inside of you or outside of you that help you cope. Because how you cope determines the, sim the symptoms of trauma that you will experience because we all respond differently. But all of us, when we're faced with something overwhelming, we'll do whatever we have to to survive and be as safe as possible in that moment. So we adapt. So there are four basic ways that we respond tra to traumatic experiences. We go into fight, we stand up for ourselves, flee, we get away if we can, freeze. When we can't get away, we have this capacity to go numb and not feel what would be too overwhelming and prohibit us from being able to cope. And then the fourth response is we please or appease, where we have to make sure that somebody is okay in the system, so we sacrifice what's best for us and we avoid conflict or fear or making the situation any worse. And you know, what was adaptive and helped you survive, if you're still responding that way today, it may be maladaptive. It may be preventing you from connecting or getting your needs met. So if today you're in a fight mode, you might have anger issues. You might be really controlling or you might be a little bit of a bully or you could just lose a lot of relationships easily. If you're someone who flees, the first sign of stress, you might be like, oh, I'm done. I don't trust this. Um, people might say you're a little distant. You could be sitting on the couch next to someone and maybe they'll say, you feel so far away, like what's going on? If you freeze and go numb, you literally will kind of tune out of things and not feel them as a protective measure. So you, you may feel lonely and disconnected, like lonely in a crowded room, because if you can't feel something inside of you, you can't feel someone else. And then the fourth response, if you are appeasing and pleasing, you probably will struggle with self-esteem, feel like you never get your needs met, and that may be okay for a while, but eventually you're gonna have some deep anger issues that you'll probably push down. You could have depression that can show up in health problems. So those four ways that you may respond will determine the symptoms that you may experience. And the best way to think about trauma is to think of a computer. Let's say you were um, watching a movie and you opened a window and then you muted the movie and you put that window aside. And then you opened another window, um, opened a movie, muted it. And if you kept doing that six or seven times, eventually your laptop would start to have issues. It might freeze, it might crash, you won't be able to stream data anymore. And that's what happens when we freeze and store a lot of emotion and painful experiences in our body, eventually there's not enough resources to operate effectively and symptoms emerge. So these are some clinical symptoms of trauma that we use to evaluate. So intrusive memories, flashbacks, avoidance, being reluctant to go around people, places, or situations, feeling numb, um, difficulty sleeping or focusing, emotional mood swings, going really high and really low, and then um, being very hypervigilant, having a startle response, reacting very quickly. And then there are the trauma symptoms that I see every day in my practice that I really think explain how trauma shows up individually, 
and collectively. Because we talked about in part one of this series that when trauma isn't able to be healed, individual trauma, we pass it down through the generations. And over time, unhealed trauma starts to look like culture and that's just how our world is. But that's actually not true. That's how a traumatized world is that we live in. We sort of normalize it. And so I think it can be helpful to look at how there's individual trauma symptoms and collective trauma symptoms, because right now with all the anger, polarization, sort of immobilization in our world, we can't get things done. We're not rising up to really solve a lot of the problems that we're facing. Um, these are symptoms of collective trauma. So I'm gonna list these 13 symptoms, the individual symptoms and then the collective symptoms, okay? So the first one is individualism. And this, if on an individual level, you will never want anyone to know that you have a problem, you don't wanna be a bother, you'll feel like, oh, I'm being needy if you ask for help. So you're reluctant to be vulnerable. You might pride yourself on being independent, but sometimes that's a real trauma response, this inability to ask for help. And then beating yourself up if you need help. We all need help. And so on a collective level, this might show up with a real disapproval of people who in society who may need help because you may think, well, I didn't have help. I pulled myself up. Why should you? And there's sort of a vulnerability. If I feel your problems, that'll awoke, awake the things that I'm sort of numb to. So that's individualism. The second really common symptom is minimizing. And this is the tendency to say, well, it really wasn't that bad. We always had a roof over our head or you need to protect somebody in the system. Like, you know, my father worked really hard, so he was never there. So there's this dismissing of how it really affected you. And if that happened to you, you will tend to do that to yourself. And you might say to yourself, um, oh, you know, I'm just being dramatic. I'm just exaggerating. And then you may have been labeled too needy or too much when in fact you weren't really. It was just that you had needs and there weren't resources in the system for whatever reason to help you. And then minimizing in the collective trauma symptoms would be that normalization of like, this is just how the world is. And we can justify a lack of equity and access to resources as just the way it is. So a third symptom is difficulty making decisions. Now, if you don't make a decision, that can prevent you from having to sort of take a stand where someone might criticize you or judge you. So if you're avoidant and are worried about feeling pain or making someone angry, you might be kind of vague. Oh, I don't know. It's hard to make a decision. Um, and in the collective world of collective trauma, this is often where you'll see appeasement of bullies and world leaders. We can't make a decision. We can't stand up to someone because it may affect us as a society or as a country. So the fourth symptom of individual and collective trauma is living in the future. And this will manifest in the need to, if I just do this, then everything will be okay. If I just lose 10 pounds, if I just make more money, if I just get that job, if I just get married, if I just have kids, if I just make sure this happens, then I'll be okay. So it's a constant never feeling enough and wanting to be somewhere else than where you are right now. And that's a way to avoid dealing with what's happening right now. It's also keeps you not having access to power because your real sense of power is in the here and now. So collectively, that can manifest as um, constant striving, achieving, producing, which in the U.S. is something that we are way out of balance in. And then the fifth symptom would be having a sense of urgency. Trauma can sometimes make us want to go really, 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 really fast. 
I think of it like a fan that starts spinning and eventually you can't see how fast it's going. It's like a motor that doesn't shut off and it wants us to be urgently busy achieving so that again, we're in the out of the here and now. So if you have a, a feeling of desperation about making a decision, that could be a trauma response. And on the collective level, that's that need to be busy, go, 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 do, do, do. And you know, COVID-19 really illuminated what happens when we slow down. And trauma doesn't want us to slow down because we might feel things. And when all of us sort of went into lockdown and were staying at home and not going out, everybody's emotions came up individually and collectively. You saw an explosion of awareness of the pain that's in our society that for the most time we were really suppressing. So the sixth uh, symptom of individual and collective trauma is living in your head. And this is when you get super analytical and you're thinking, thinking, thinking about everything, but you're not able to feel. This can manifest in anxiety, um, symptoms of ADHD. There's a real correlation between trauma and ADHD. If you can't see and you can't focus, you can't feel. That's a brilliant adaptive response, but over time, it can be maladaptive. And, you know, living in your head is another way we sort of become academic and normalize really painful issues in society that we have to address and we normalize them. We sort of escape to, we'll scroll through social media, we'll just be mindlessly focused on sports, celebrities, you know, sound bites. We can't have a sound bite that's longer than eight seconds. Even that's way too long because we, we have to be constantly distracted, moving, going. So the seventh symptom of trauma is pleasing and appeasing. And we already talked about this one a lot. And if you have a constant need to please and fix and be a caregiver, you may get some self-esteem needs met initially, but over time, you are sending a message. Sacrificing means I don't count, I don't matter. And there, it takes a lot of energy to suppress all of your needs. And over time, you're gonna have a lot of anger that could manifest as depression or health issues over time. And if you look at collective trauma appeasing, there's so many um, situations where we're afraid to stand up to bullies, we're afraid to express ourselves, we're afraid somebody in social media is gonna attack us. And so um, there's also uh, people who wanna please and rescue often have a huge desire to become people who are our service, nurses, doctors, firefighters, social workers. And there's also a huge burnout that can happen because if you give, 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 trying to rescue, trying to help, trying to solve all of these problems and prevent bad things in the world, which might've been your role in your family, you can get really, really burned out and start to feel like nobody's listening, nobody's helping because there's some massive problems in our world that for the most part we've been trained to avoid because they create so much overwhelm we don't know how to deal with them. So the eighth symptom is avoidance, numbness, isolation. And we've talked a little bit about this, but if you as an individual are avoiding to feel safe, you'll be disconnected, you'll be lonely, you might stay at home and isolate, you won't feel like you belong in this world either you won't be connected to your community or to the earth, to the planet. And that can really be painful and you kind of get in survival mode. And in the collective world, the collective traumatization, that can look like a complete lack of compassion for the world. Like if I have to feel all of this pain, I'll get overwhelmed. So it's not conscious. People don't want to be having a lack of empathy, but it's just too much. And so there's this normalization and sort of a checkout that happens. And um, 
It also can show up in the collective is huge segments of the population feel like they don't matter. They, they feel completely disconnected. And there's a justification um, that I just have to take care of myself. Some, I just have to take care of my family or my country or my segment of industry. It's very, it can be very um, isolating and just me. And that is a symptom of trauma. The ninth symptom of individual and collective trauma is scarcity and lack. When there is a lack of emotional resources and support that goes on and on and on, that can begin to manifest as a lack of resources, either financial resources of support in the community. And collectively, you can see that again, where segments of the population don't have access to resources. There's a lack of equality, a lack of support, and again, that normalization. So a 10th symptom is sensitivity. Now, if you experience a sensitivity to smells, to light, to sound, part of that could be being the need to be hypervigilant and always aware of how things in the environment could be harmful. People who have a sensitivity and have had a lot of trauma, they tend to be wary of taking a lot of medication because they don't want to be dependent and have to, to rely on something and put something in their body. And sometimes that sensitivity to light or sound or smells gets dismissed and doctors will say, oh, you couldn't possibly be sensitive to that. Or family members will say, you're too sensitive. So there's sort of this shaming component. And collectively that can show up in labeling somebody a victim or if somebody's trying to advocate for themselves or represent segments of the population, other people can be sort of dismissive, like, ugh, you know. Um, and again, all of this is numbness because we don't know how to identify, feel our emotions, soothe our emotions, and open to solutions that would come if we would allow ourselves to heal some of this pain. So the 11th symptom is rage. That's pretty self-evident, but you may have bursts of anger, especially if you've been suppressing it, suppressing it, suppressing it. You may have a part of you that just sometimes will come out and explode. And you know, hurt people hurt. Sometimes feeling angry is feels so much more empowering than helpless, overwhelmed, full of despair. And so you can see that collectively when large segments of the population start to protest or protests turn into a lot of anger because we have been carrying a lot of emotional burdens, especially in the US for a long time that we have not learned how to address. So the 12th symptom is a need for control. So in an individual example, you could be incredibly controlling, have to make a lot of lists, be very bossy, um, need to be right. And all of that's coming from a fear of if you're not in control, what might happen? Things that you've been guarding against and pushing down for a really long time might come up. And you know, you look at collectively, that comes out with the controlling of resources, sort of that justification of capitalism without a moral compass. There's nothing personal, it's just business, sort of this constant need for control. Um, and the last symptom is domination. And in an, in an individual level, that could be you are a bully or this need for perfectionism, dominating to have the best, the most resources, have the most followers, have the best, beautiful home and nice life. And it's sort of like, if I have it all and I'm at the top, no one can take it away from me. And then we justify that as normal, healthy. You can see all the symbol, symptoms sort of coming together, of individualism, being numb, feeling disconnected. So I think it's interesting to look at the collective symptoms of trauma because it can give you compassion instead of looking at someone and thinking, oh, what is wrong? They seem so annoying. Seeing them through the lens of trauma can be helpful. 
So this was a rather long list of symptoms and the next video is going to be how we heal from trauma. And I'm going to introduce you to a wonderful system of healing called IFS, which stands for Internal Family Systems. So I would love it if you'd post in the comments any questions that you have. And please remember this. Some days you can radiate light. Some days you just need to receive light. And wherever you are on your journey of being the light, you are always welcome to connect here at Delight the World for hope, healing, and illumination. And if you liked this video, subscribe to Delight the World. And thanks for watching.